of all the lovely triggers and actions they provide in the SharePoint data connector, why or why? And it kind of baffles me because it's not as if it can't be done. We've been using that kind of functionality amongst being able to create lists and libraries and sites and deleting them uh, just by calling the SharePoint APIs uh, directly and doing all these actions. So it is doable, but for whatever reason, this um, doesn't exist as an action in the SharePoint data connector. So a lot of people have been going around the houses uh, um, to get around it. And one of the most common things I've seen is people will have a file and then they will take its content or get the content of the file, create a new file, put the content in it and any properties, um, and then delete the old file. And okay, that allows you to rename it, but you lose all the version history, you lose all the auditing, you lose everything about that file through its current life cycle. And from a content manager's point of view, that's not acceptable. We can't lose that kind of information uh, for any documents. So I'm going to introduce you to the HTTP request if you've never seen it before. I want to give you a nice simple introduction to using this to rename a file. And it's very straightforward. Now we spend an hour on HTTP requests because there's a lot to it, but I'm going to take you through a little snippet about how to learn how to use it um, and give you a nice visual way of seeing what it's made up of so that you can explore what you can do. And before you know it, you can actually create sites um, in SharePoint using an HTTP request. Okay, so I'm using a standard team site, nothing special. I'm using a standard document library. And in that library, just for the demo only, I have got a little template, a little word template that when I fill in, if I go and fill this in now. Okay, so I've got just some sample data in there. These are property fields, so the user will then fill these in. Um, and when they finish, they close the document down and it populates the columns in the background. Now, the idea is I don't want them to worry about anything other than what's inside it. They're going to fill in that sort of form. Uh, and then what I'd like it to do is take something like the course reference, that little course ref there. I would like the file name to be that. So I've got all the data set. I've got the document set there waiting for it. What I've also done, um, just so I can demonstrate this, is I've got the ID of the libraries items and the title so you can go into your settings gear cog library settings and um, you need to go into a view of any kind i'm just going to go into the default view and enable the id and the title they'll be in here in alphabetical order and then click ok and that just brings those columns on there these are purely for display purposes the title i probably won't even touch to be honest but the id is essential as you're going to see so now it's time to build my Power Automate. So I'm going to go back to my Microsoft logo there. Just going to go into Power Automate. OK, so I'm going to go into My Flows. I haven't got any in there just to keep it nice and simple. I could use any trigger I want. It doesn't matter. All I want to do is two actions. One that gets the uh, items properties, which will include the ID. And then I'll use the ID to call up the, um, the item for which the file name is in place, and then change the file name. For this example, I'm going to do a new instant. So instant CloudFlow, uh, and I'm going to do a SharePoint for a selected I uh, file. For a selected file. Click, and create. There we go. For a selected file, all I've got to do now is specify the site, and that was my YT vids, my YouTube videos site. There it is. Uh, and then the library, that will just pop up with that course outlines library. Next thing to do, because that's just literally triggering the file or it's triggering on the file that I've selected. So when I run that Power Automate, all I've got to do is just tick, go to Power Automate, and it will be in there uh, when I'm finished. I'm going to now that I've got my trigger in, I'm going to give it a nice, decent name. So update file name to course ref. OK, so the two steps I need to rename the file. One that grabs the properties. So I'm going to go new step. I'm going to look at the SharePoint data connector. Get file. And I want the get file 
properties. So in case you get confused, what's the difference between get file metadata, get file properties? Get file metadata goes to the content database, the actual database where the file is and pulls all the intrinsic stuff in, such as the file size, the modified by, all that sort of stuff that it's actually buried with the file. Get file properties is your columns. So the columns that you build in the list where the file's connected, ping, because it's the item I want to pull in and the ID for it. Same as before, it's the same site, it's the same library, ID from that trigger. Okay, next step, SharePoint. And all you gotta do is type in HTTP. It all should pop up at the top there. Send an HTTP request to SharePoint. This is the magic. So you've got the site address, which is kind of okay, because it's the exact same site. Then you've got this method, URI, headers and body, and this is where people get confused. Let's break them down. Method. The only two we really want to care about when you're getting to grips with this is get and post. Um, you've got various other ones in there, patch, and some people use merge, or explain them in a minute. But with this, you're basically telling it what you want to do. So get will be able to retrieve data. Like if I want to pull the properties in and work with them in an email, I can pull them in, I'll get them. If I want to make changes to the properties or the file in some way, I can do a post. Now you can have use other methods, but I tend to use a post and I'll explain how I do a patch um, using the headers in a minute. So I'm now telling it I intend to change something. I want to post my changes. Um, so I need to specify the URI of the function, the, the API that I want to call and do all that lovely work. So how does this work? It gives you a little tip there, API or underscore API slash web slash list slash get by title. Blah, 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 blah. Let's, let's make that visual so you can see how this works. I'm gonna go to my SharePoint site and I'm actually gonna duplicate the tab. I don't wanna lose sight of that library. And what I wanna do with this duplicate is just remove everything after the site name. Delete that, press enter. There we go. So I'm back at the home page of my site. And now I'm going to go to the end of that. Make sure there's a forward slash at the end and type in underscore API. Now this is where I can call up any sort of uh, API I want. The one I want is forward slash lists. Press enter. And that will pull back every single list that is in this site. Now it pulls it back in XML. So if you're new to XML, don't worry, uh, there is an absolute reason why I am talking you through this. But this is a good way of making sure that before we go into here and put in the URI and other bits and bobs, if we test the Power Automate and there's a slight little thing like a commas missing or a, a single apostrophe is missing, you could be there for six hours trying to work out what the problem is. Whereas this one, it's much more immediate. So if I go in there and type in forward slash API, losts instead of lists, I get an error straight away. So lists, there we go. I'm now gonna go further in and I want to look at a specific list. So I'm gonna go into the end of that again, forward slash, and I'm gonna say get by title. And I capitalize the first letter of each word just to make sure that I'm spelling it correctly. You don't have to do that. Open parenthesis and in a single quote, so I open quote, you type in the title of your library. Now the very important thing is uh, the title is what you'd normally see down here or at the top of the title. That's the friendly name and it can differ from what's up there. Okay so if you think about it that's the name that, that someone had used to create the library but you can go in there rename it as much as you like to make it more user-friendly uh, with spaces uh, and make it a little bit more glorified over the simplified one. So we were looking for the title which is what appears to the user. Okay, so that would be, I've forgotten talking about it all that time, course space outlines. And I'm using a space because I know that the web browser will change that space to its hexadecimal code of percentage 20. I ain't got to worry about that. So I'm going to close the quote down, not single quote, close the parenthesis, press enter. I get a smaller lot of global but that is all the information about that particular list or library. And then I want to go even further, forward slash items, put in brackets a specific item, and the item I need to specify 
is called by its ID number. There it is. So I'm going to say I would look for item number six, please. Ever so polite to my browser. Press enter. That is now saying I'm looking in the items and I'm looking for specifically item number six. Now, one, I now got everything I need to copy and paste in there knowing it works because I've got no errors pop up like you saw earlier. I'm going to take all of this from the underscore API right to the end. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go into my flow and paste it into the URI to tell it to go and grab that item. Thing is, though, that's always going to grab item six. I want to replace that six ID, and you could just type it in much easier. There it is. It's the list item. Headers. Oh, here we go. This is going to be some fun. I've got these up there ready to for you to copy and paste from the description below. So the first header I want is to specify to it the content type that I'm passing through. And well, that's basically the content type that I'm passing here in the body. So I'm going to put in there application slash JSON. I'm writing this in JSON. Semicolon. And then I specify the protocol for JSON. So this would be um, OData equal verbose. Next thing down is the X HTTP method. So I don't know if you've ever come across this before, but when you go to do like the update file properties and you get like, you know, if you have six columns, then it will tell you, you have to update all six columns. You only want to update one like status, but you have to put values in every single property. If you don't, when you update the document, that property goes blank. With the send HTTP request, I can specify the method in which it's going to post, um, extension method. Now, you might see this appear a lot. We would use patch. So what that says is, I don't, I'm, don't, you're not expecting me to send back updates to all the properties. I'm only patching the properties that I need to change. In this case, it's just the file name. And the last one I want to put in there would be the if match. This is a little bit more tricky to explain. Um, but the way it works is when I pull the, the, the properties of the document in, it kind of um, pulls in an E tag. An E tag is like a serial code that sort of uh, tells me like the, 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 the byte size. Well, it's a confirmation of the, the file size, the, the modified date, and sort of puts it all together like a unique sort of code. So when I send it back, I can say, look, only update his data if um, any of these sort of e tags match um, or if a specific one is older than yesterday or you know I, I can do all the situations says if this is true or this is false then push these properties back to the document or to the item so I'm going to say if any of the resources match uh, any e tag okay that's it there's the headers the next thing is to put in the body. And again, I'm going to put that into the description. There it is. There's one thing that you need to change. This is very important. And it's this bit here that specifies the item type. And the item type is kind of made up of the list or library name with the word item at the end. Uh, and that's why we did that little ping, if you like, to the API call. So I'm going to go back to that tab. And what you're looking for is something that says sp.data. So if I do a control F to find sp.data, you can see it there in the background. You see that? And that's what I'm going to grab. So I'm going to grab everything between the quotes, sp.data dot, and then whatever it says, item. Copy it. Go to your Power Automate and replace what's already between the single quotes. Paste it with your own personal item type. Underneath that, you then have got all the things you want to change. You can change the title property, put the value in. I've got the file leaf ref, and that's the actual source column name or the localized column name for file name or name. So what I've got to do now is tell it what file name I want it to be. And I want to grab the name or the content of the course ref field. There it is. And then at the end of it, because it's, it's the full, full qualified name, so you've got to put in the dot followed by the extension. So I've got the docx 
already in there. You just change that to whatever you want it to be. That's it, he says, hoping it will work. Um, don't expect these kind of actions to work first time. There's a lot of code, little tiny things like you know, comma, parenthesis brackets, single quotes, things like that. You know, you overlook or put in the wrong place can cause a simple error. It maybe doesn't like the percentage 20. I've seen that a couple of times where it doesn't like you pushing through the hexadecimal code for the space. So I tend to put a space in. I'm now going to save that. We're ready to test it. Now, because it was a manual trigger, I can't use the test option, obviously, because it is manual already. So all I've got to do is go into here. Let's go and have a look. So I'm going to select that file called document. I'm going to use the automate option here. Up pops my new Power Automate. Click continue. Click run flow. I could wait a few seconds to see if that pops up on screen. I could press F5. I didn't have to press F5. I forgot that. There it is. It's renamed in a few seconds. Please like and subscribe this video because it will then allow you to see when I get new ones coming out. And if you have any questions uh, on Power Automate, Power Apps, anything like that, if you've got requests on any other kind of apps, uh, I seem to be getting some weird and wacky ones coming up. So feel free. Um, post them to me, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm going to regret saying that now. I know it. I know something odd is going to come up. But, you know, I like a challenge. So give me give me a little uh, question and I'll see if I can answer it for you. Even if it's Word or Excel, I'm, I'm happy to go with them as well. Um, give me a challenge. <laughs> Stay safe. Have fun.